Hi, everyone. So uh, about energy. Energy is a, a really cool uh, kind of concept in, in physics and physical science. We're going to talk a whole lot about types of energy and what energy uh, means both for uh, the quantum world as well as the, the big sort of classical Newtonian world where you have things like candles or pediatric and adolescent clinic check-ins. So this is Emily's check-in. She's 30 months old. She weighs 29 pounds, 6 ounces, which is 50 percentile, right? Right, good in the middle. She's 35 inches uh, tall, which is 41 percentile. And she doesn't have my head circumference because I have a huge head. Uh, so she must take after her mother. Her head circumference is 48 centimeters. So they go from pounds and inches to centimeters. For, that's interesting. Metric versus... Uh, American units. Anyway, so energy is, is something that, that we're going to be talking a whole lot about. But I, I wanted to uh, give you just a, a brief overview of a couple of things to remind you uh, that, that you probably already know. Uh, but, but just to remind you about what, 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 what you might come across in, in our studies. There are two main types of energy. And we're going to study the formulas behind these. But you have things like kinetic energy, which means the energy of motion. So if I have this candle and I'm tossing the candle, I'm exerting mo uh, motion onto that candle. So this candle's in motion and it's going against uh, the, the pull of gravity here on the ground. So this candle has uh, kinetic energy that's being expressed through my hand, right? And it has potential energy. So when I throw this candle up, when I, when, I vomit, no. when I throw this candle up in the air, uh, there's a point where it, it hits its apex and it falls back down. So about right there, right? So it doesn't keep going up because there's gravity pulling down on it. Theoretically, if there was no gravity, I could throw this candle up and it would keep on going and, and hit the ceiling and we would all be hitting the ceiling because nothing would be pulling us down. Uh, this is my wife's ugly green chair, but I, I'm sitting in this ugly green chair uh, because the kids are in the other room asleep. I don't want to wake them up talking about kinetic and potential energy late at night. But the idea of me sitting in this chair happens because gravity is pulling me down as a force. Uh, I am expressing energy, and this chair is expressing energy by, by lifting me up off the ground, just like this candle when I, when I put energy into it. It has energy of motion. It goes up, it hits a little apex, and then it falls back down. When it hits the apex and it stops moving, it regains potential energy. So think of a trampoline. We have a trampoline in our backyard, and the trampoline is um, a death trap. Uh, but the idea of the trampoline is, is really interesting because when Ben and Emmy jump on the trampoline, when they, when they press down into the trampoline, or when you're in a trampoline and you press down, the trampoline has elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. So the trampoline actually like forces you back up and then it gets to a point and it stops and then it comes back down. But there are points where the trampoline is in motion and then it stops and it pauses and then it, it falls back into uh, its kinetic state. So kinetic energy, energy of motion, potential energy, we call it the energy at rest. It's kind of a lie, it's not really what it is. We'll talk about what potential energy means, especially in 10th grade in physics. My, my physics students just did that and they did a great job. And you will too when you get to 10th grade uh, with me we, when we study physics of energy. But uh, we're going to be looking at energy a whole lot in the coming weeks and months, probably until the new year, uh, because energy is one of those concepts of physical science that, that you really do need to master. So energy itself, the ability to do work. Work is defined as a force, so me pushing up on this candle over a certain distance. So in this case, about three, four inches, or we could say about 10 centimeters, right? So I just did some work. Hey, look at that. I did work. Uh, work is force times distance. And we'll talk about the units there, but energy is the ability to do that work. Work is force times distance. Energy can be basically right now, you, you'll find more, but right now we're going to split those into potential energy and kinetic energy, K-I-N-E. T uh, kinetic, K-I-N-E-T-I-C, uh, kinetic 
energy, uh, energy of motion. And energy, uh, I wrote this down in my notebook because I thought it was, it was important for you to remember, energy depends on the motion and interactions of an object within a system. So energy is the ability to do work, but it depends on the motion and the interactions of objects within a system. So that can be anything from my hand throwing this candle into the air uh, to the radiation of, of, uh, of an object. And, and we'll get into that. You don't really need that right now for, for the assignments you have. But kinetic, potential, energy, the ability to work. Work is force times distance. And we'll talk about what force is measured in. Distance is measured in centimeters, just like Emmy Lou's head. 48 centimeters, 41 percentile. I'm glad she's not gonna have a huge head. It, 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 was, a, it was a burden my whole life, but we'll talk about that later in, in class too. Meanwhile, uh, we will uh, rejoin in a, in a few and talk about our next core concept. Kinetic potential work equals force times distance. Energy is the ability to do work.